Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss one architecture related concept, okay? And that is serverless architecture for handling time series data. So these kind of architecture related questions also frequently asked in any big data related engineering role. Uh, maybe you are using AWS, Azure or GCP, whatever cloud service or different big data components. And the interviewer might ask you that, okay, in this particular situation, just build a data pipeline with different cloud services or different big data tools and technologies, right? So that time you need to design the system. You may be writing that particular architecture in Notepad or you may be using some online tool to explain the architecture. Anything is possible. So let's consider such scenario where I will discuss a serverless architecture with AWS services for handling time series data, okay? So already I created a separate playlist for a system design with AWS. So there I generally explain different architectures related to some specific use case, how we can design using AWS in an optimized way. So if you are interested in understanding different system design concepts, then you can check that particular playlist link, which I'll be sharing in the description box. Okay. So without any further delay, let's try to understand how we can design this. So basically the interviewer will first share you some requirement. Like for example, in this case, suppose time series data, right? So from the name itself, you can understand that, okay, if there is time series data, that means very old data will have lesser significance or lesser importance and the latest data or current data has more importance, okay? That kind of concept should start coming in your mind whenever you hear the time series word in big data pipeline, right? So the requirement is to collect and store temperature reading from potentially thousands of sensors. So we are having thousands of sensors. From the sensors, we are getting temperature information. That's what is written here. Okay. Now we also need to able to quickly retrieve a reading for a given sensor and time scale. Okay. So each sensor is tagged with sensor ID. And for a particular sensor, for a particular timestamp, what is the temperature reading? That we need to retrieve quickly. That is the query execution should be very fast. The next point should be, we need to keep these for 30 days, after which they can be deleted. That is pretty obvious. So as I told you, right, that whenever we work with time series data, older data get lesser importance eventually. So here, the interviewer suppose has mentioned that after 30 days, you can delete the older records okay like that rolling 30 days interval you have to continuously delete that kind of mechanism also you have to add now suppose this is the requirement and you have to design an architecture so pause my video and try to think from these particular three points what are the aws surfaces coming in your mind okay and then i will explain the detail architecture so now here let me explain the architecture so when you are reading the third point that we need to delete the records which are 30 days old so basically kind of ttl concept come in our mind that is time to leave right so the time to leave is available in dynamodb so we can think of using dynamodb for storing all our this sensor id timestamp and the temperature what our sensor is measuring okay right and we can configure the ttl for 30 days that is one point okay and we need to quickly retrieve the data and as we know that DynamoDB is pretty much fast, it is serverless, that is another advantage, we no need to worry about the server part, right, it can scale up, so that is another advantage and apart from that, see, here if you consider the point number 2, it is written that we need to quickly retrieve a reading for a given sensor and timestamp, okay, so sensor ID we can consider as DynamoDB primary key and for that particular sensor we might have multiple readings so based on timestamp we will have different readings right so timestamp we can consider as sort key so sensor id we can consider as primary key for dynamodb timestamp as sort key so that way our query retrieval for a particular sensor and for a particular timestamp will be pretty much fast okay and now we understood the point two and three now point one is basically the sensor data will be coming in near real time from the sensors as we can easily understand from the basic concepts. So obviously we need some kinesis in the beginning, right? So with this foundation concept, let us try to build the architecture. So here I will use draw.io website for making this particular diagram. So here first I will take a sensor block, okay? Suppose I am having my sensor block here, multiple thousands of sensors are 
reading measuring the temperature and they need to push the data so we need to bring that to cloud so what we can do where the sensor is measuring there we can write a small python code which will put the temperature in our kinesis data stream okay so that in real time the data will be coming so here i can use kinesis and here kinesis data stream i can use so here it will go like in this place and here i can make an arrow here okay so let me just give the name here so here is my temperature sensor and here is basically my kinesis data stream okay cool now what will happen this kinesis data stream whatever it will receive that we need to ingest in dynamodb okay so here i will take dynamodb okay here i'll be keeping and how we can ingest the data from kinesis data stream to dynamodb it is very simple just we can write a simple python code in lambda right so here it will be serverless also when if you are using lambda so here i can put this particular block in middle and here from the kinesis data stream the lambda will read the data in batches and then ingest in dynamodb and as i told you for faster query execution we have to keep the sensor id as primary key timestamp as short key and then we can have temperature column also so sensor id timestamp and temperature these are major columns in our dynamodb table okay right now what will happen eventually that after 30 days the ttl feature will remove the old records okay so that time we will use kinesis to trigger that okay another kinesis data stream and that will basically capture the ttl records okay and then what we will do we will use firehose here so from data stream based on time configuration or based on how much mb you want to accumulate based on that configuration the firehose will dump the data in s3 okay so once our data comes in s3 even if we want to do some batch processing on our sensor data that also we can do that is another advantage okay so here is three here data is coming so what i can do here i can write a glue crawler or crawler let me search so here is my glue crawler so what will happen here that i can just keep it on the top so here we can have a glue crawler which will crawl the s3 folders where the TTL data will be coming that expired data which is having age more than 30 days and then here after crawling it will create the table in our glue catalog okay so here i can keep glue data catalog and here we can have athena from where the data analyst team can execute some ad hoc queries okay on our s3 historical data okay and then maybe they if they want to build some dashboard that also they can do using amazon quick site okay for visualization so that is one way and so this particular part is basically for data analysis let me just keep a block here so this particular block is for data analysis now what about data engineers what the data engineers can do they can basically run the spark jobs on this batch data in emr okay and then after processing maybe they can write in some other s3 bucket you can consider this as landing s3 bucket and this is basically curated or published layer you can consider okay or curated s3 bucket so here the emr will write the data and from s3 maybe what you can do you can update the data in snowflake cloud data warehouse platform okay so here i will put snowflake that can be external table or internal table whatever so here in snowflake the data will come and then maybe what you can do that from snowflake you can pull the data in tableau and make some beautiful visualization okay so this particular side i can just frame it this particular part is for data engineer section okay so let me just label all the components so more or less the architecture looks like this okay so just a quick recap so here thousands of sensors are there which are measuring temperatures 
and in real time they are ingesting the data in kinesis data stream okay from data stream using lambda we are putting in dynamodb the only reason to choose dynamodb is it has the feature of ttl using which automatically it will expire those records which are older than 30 days as per requirement and not only that if we just put proper partition key and sort key then the query execution is pretty much first so as here requirement is we need to retrieve the data for a particular sensor for a particular timestamp what is the temperature if we need that kind of data we can just make the sensor id as partition key or primary key and then timestamp as sort key okay for query performance improvement okay and then when from dynamodb the data will be expired using kinesis data stream we can put in kinesis firehose maybe here you can put a lambda to add new line character in between every element those things you can add and then after lambda transformation that kinesis firehose data you can dump in in s3 landing layer okay here the data will be coming as basically json data on that json data if data analyst need that data what you can do you can point that s3 location to blue crawler which will crawl and update a catalog table that catalog table you can query using athena the data analyst can query using athena and they can build amazon quicksight dashboards as well from it okay so this part is also ad hoc and if you consider data engineers so they need to run heavy by spark jobs right so that time if they want they can use emr for computation from the landing layer they can read the json data after processing joining filtering etc etc they can convert the data into parky or afro that is storage optimized file format and then write in s3 publish layer from that layer we can ingest the data in snowflake cloud data warehouse platform which can basically act like a centralized data warehouse for our whole system for this time series data analysis and then in tableau you can load the data and build some visualization tool for our business improvement okay so this is basically one sample architecture for handling time series data the main hero in this particular architecture is dynamodb okay and why i thought about dynamodb that also i have justified basically from this particular third point i came up with dynamodb idea and whenever you are thinking about sensors so sensors are reading the temperature it should be ingested real time because if you are ingesting the sensor temperature data after two days it will not have any value right so it should be real time so that's why in the ingestion layer here i am using kinesis data stream which is reading the data from different sensors and then using lambda we are writing in dynamic okay as simple as that obviously you can improve this architecture there is no correct and wrong answer whenever we are having system design related interview questions we, we need to justify that why we are using which aws service okay or which big data tool if you are justifying properly interviewer will be happy with the answer okay so i hope you understood this particular architecture this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you for watching